Welcome to Rev Certain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton, and today I'm here with Aiton Reisel, who's the Chief Revenue Officer at Sweet Inn, a new concept that's combining boutique hotels with apartment rentals. And we're going to be talking about the developments in the travel sector and the importance of tech within that. So, hi Aiton, thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting me. So, Sweet Inn is a concept which is basically allowing people to rent apartments in a city, but it's run a little bit like a hotel, and they get the benefits of you know, some of the services you would get in a hotel and the reassurance of that. Right. Why is this concept becoming more popular, do you think? And, you know, how is that part of the ever-evolving travel industry in general? So I think we haven't created the apartment rental genre. No. It's there and it's been there for, I think, many years. Mm -hmm. People think it's recent, but it's not recent. But I think the demand is increasing very much. There's a lot of conversations around security and safety and et cetera, et cetera. And I think... That's where we fit in. So I think we're giving a very, very local and fun experience. And as I said, a very unique experience. But at the other end, we are we do have a little bit of what the hotel or the fun of the hotel providing, you know, somebody personal, a guest relation that can come and help you if you have issues and to give you local tips, et cetera, et cetera. So I think providing confidence, a unique experience, but giving it very, very local. I think this is the reason why Sweeten and other companies are really you know, becoming uh, the tip of the iceberg of the travel industry. And what do you see as the kind of key trends in the way that people do travel and the way that they want to experience cities and want to experience you know, their stay there? So I'm relatively new to this industry, but I think uh, from learning for the past uh, month and reading a lot, I think that... I think there are two major trends that are happening now. One, you're not going to a city, but you're going to explore. Okay, so the entire purpose of your travel becomes differently. And I think you see so many tech companies coming around that, right? From providing you the great experience and the fast way to get tickets and then the best combination, like really packaging, but it's not only packaging the flight in the hotel or the flight in the apartment, but it's packaging the experience. I think mm -hmm. that's one thing. The second thing, and I think it's really interesting to see how the business travel is, a, is, is really becoming different. Like you think of who's traveling for business, for what reasons, um, what they're looking for when they travel for businesses, because it's not always only corporate companies, but can be startups that are looking for a different environment. There may be also some place to work at while they're at their destination and, you know, they want to be okay with price. It can't be too. So I think it's really interesting to see the trends of business travel and business travel is very important in the world of travel because that can help you moderate the seasonality that you have in uh, really consumer travel. And what differences then are there in the way that you need to approach your marketing for these two kind of different audiences? Because if you're approaching a B2B traveler who's there, you know, needs to work, who's there, his purpose is there for work and they might want to have fun while they're there, but it's not the purpose compared to a consumer who's purely going on holiday. What are the differences in the way that you need to kind of position what you're offering and, and talk to those customers? So I think that's a very fair question. So my background is data-driven marketing. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I worked for Google for seven years in my last role leading gaming for Google. I think everything comes around very, very specific segmentation. And so it doesn't really matter at what state of mind the consumer is. It's more important that we actually serve him the right value based on who or she is, right? Mm -hmm. So where they are in terms of planning, what the purpose is, etc. So I must say I'm amazed at the amount of external signals that we can leverage to make sure that we provide a local experience mm -hmm. or a very personalized experience. And I think that's that will be our key secret. Well, it's not a secret because I just told you. Yeah. But hopefully that <laughs> will be our key secret for success. So when you say external factors, what kind of things do you mean? Um, I think the amount of information that we have. To, I'll give you an example. Weather mm -hmm. impacts very much travel, right? Yep. Seasonality impacts travel. Um, economy impacts travel. Mm -hmm. Demand versus supply impacts travel. So I think those are all external. That's not Sweetens data, mm -hmm. but that's data that's out there. All we need to go is collect it and leverage it to make sure that we add our layers and again, again serve something that's very, very personal. So if you're now surfacing the web and I come to you with an ad, and it doesn't have to be an ad, but that can be an example, and I'm offering something that's totally unsuitable in terms of time, length, price, etc., then probably one, I'm wasting a lot of money. Two, 
it's going to be hard for me to convince you over time that you should come and try our product. Yeah. So I think that comes down very much to like really building segmentations in a way. And that's where also I'm going to invest my next six months in really building the segmentations and making sure that we can tailor the right message to the right person. And yeah, it's like you say, you know, I'm going to spend the next six months. It's not something that is something that is quite an, in you know, you can't do it overnight. It's not no. something that you can just pluck a number out of an air. You've got to really, yeah, you've got to really spend time learning about who it is that you're targeting right. and what it right. is that they exactly. want. And exactly. Making the data work for you because every company obviously yeah. needs to use right. it in a different way. Right. I, I think first is building the infrastructure before mm -hmm. even analyzing the data. Yeah. I think companies sometimes don't invest enough. And I had the privilege of seeing many companies on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. I think it is important. It is important. Even if it takes more time than you planned, the infrastructure is the heart of everything. Because it's easier to plan than to go back and say, why didn't I have this when I needed it? Right? So I think that a lot of, and that's what we're doing now, a lot of designing and planning what we want, mm -hmm. later on leveraging our data to use it. And then, you know, we were talking about how the industry is changing and how the way that, you know, people travel is changing and, and the way that obviously the internet is changing and the, the availability for people to experience things through, you know, VR, AR, through user-generated content, social is so much more than it ever was. You know, how much is the fast-paced development of the tech industry or the, of technology in general impacting travel and how can travel brands keep up with that and make sure that they are yeah. offering that? First, it is big time. Mm -hmm. It's influencing the industry. So let's divide it into two. Let's take the word in VR and AR because I think they are still a buzzword yeah. because they're not commodity. Yeah. And that's something that we have to remember. When, when these sets cost $200, $300, you won't have everybody, but you should leverage if you want to think five steps ahead. Mm -hmm. In terms of social networks and tech and development, travel is a world of word to mouth. Mm -hmm. There is a very big chance that you'll go and visit. Doesn't matter if it's a hotel, apartment, or even a you know a fun thing to do in a city that a friend of yours or you heard over dinner or your friend friends or you saw a post on Facebook mm -hmm. or post on Instagram, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think. That's exactly the tipping point of one, personalizing, and two, making sure that you're relevant there, right? It, it's a world of influencers. Like, I'm building now a team of content strategy mm -hmm. only because I really believe that if we know how to talk to our community, that's probably 50% of what we have to do before we waste $1 on marketing. Yeah, and it's also that, I think, you know, the. I think mentioning VR as a buzzword is, is kind of key because it's also why well, you've got to be thinking of these things and planning yeah. ahead. It's too easy to think, right, we better be doing all these, you know, big, cool things with VR. But you haven't even then got the basics in place of who you are targeting or what kind of content they're interested in. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, everything when you're a startup, everything has to do with priorities and what's going to be first and what's going to be last. You always want to be ahead of the market, mm -hmm. which is super important. But we also have to understand how much of the market you're going to reach once you give out a solution. So I'll give you an example. VR is an uh, excellent technology to test for, for if you want to surface your apartment in a different way. Mm -hmm. So before even the consumer using VR, we can use VR right, to show our apartments in a different angle, you know, show stuff around that's interesting, explore. So there are things that we are looking into, but it has to go to priority. Yeah, so we should really prioritize based on what we think can impact the business and help us grow. And that should really define the list. And how do you determine those priorities then? Because for a lot of businesses, you know, there's different, especially bigger businesses where they've got various stakeholders all pushing for different ideas and coming at different angles. How do you take a step back and really, you know, look at it and understand what's going to drive the most value for you? So I think collaboration is key. I think um, that's where a lot of companies fail less of looking what your responsibility is, but what everybody's responsibility mm -hmm. is. Then I won't give you all the secrets of Sweden, but we're yeah. doing a lot of work on that path. So I think it has to do very much with understanding what your counterpart has to do. Mm -hmm. And based on that, prioritizing also your work. Because if I lead the marketing and sales of the business and the pricing and the brand strategy, I'm dependent very much on our business development, right? To make sure that we surface the right things and vice versa, right? So it's 
think about it as a family, and each one has an interest in the family, but it's still a family, and that's how, and that's the road for success. And the travel industry as well, you know, there is seeing a lot more startups. It's kind of prime industry for small businesses to come with slightly different takes on things, unique ideas. Right, right. How do you see that changing, and how does the relation, you know, how do they differ from the big brands, the well-established hotel brands, and those big companies that are very well established in travel? What can startups do differently and more interestingly than so maybe those brands? I come from Tel Aviv. We're like a small Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, if you look at industries in general, not only travel, startups usually come into place. It's like a vacuum mm -hmm. where they s where there's an ability to make things more efficient. I think one of the challenges that the big big brands will have is speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd say IT because it comes back, that's like the building blocks of every business. And you can see it on the telecom industry, yeah. for example, right? This maybe shift happened a few years ago. I think there's a lot of place for that. It will be a very big question of how fast the, I'd say more experienced brands can really adjust to this ecosystem, right? So I think there are more startups than there are now companies that are able yeah. to cooperate with them but it will change, it mm -hmm. will change, because that's what's unique about industries that develop, right? We're not developing yeah. a new industry, we're bringing in a new tone of voice into this industry. And what do you then think are the biggest kind of, the best and biggest opportunities for, you know, smaller startups in this kind of industry to really harness when it comes to tech and to really help them get that step ahead and also endure longer than some of the others that might, right. you know, only last a short time? Disruption, disruption, and then the third would be disruption. Yeah. It's just being very, very lean, mm -hmm. building as much as you can by yourself, and making sure that you're not too much dependent on legacy. Because at some point it becomes a backbone, and then, yeah. and then you invest too long or too much time on fixing the backbone instead of moving forward. Yeah, and then you've missed the boat. Yeah, yeah. so I think really building strong tech teams, I know machine learning is a buzz, but it's super important because mm -hmm. it's behavioral, and we are in an industry that's behavioral. AI is a buzz, but it's very, again, behavioral. I think that's where the future is, or that's yeah. where the, you know, the, the current is. You'll see yeah. businesses today, they're much smaller, and they're creating more EBITDA and more money mm -hmm. because of their ability to move faster. Yeah. And I think that's the tipping point. Hopefully we understand it as a company. I think many companies in this industry understand it. And it is, it's gonna revolutionize, like the consumers are saying what they want, but the technology has to surface it. Yeah. Without it, it just can't work. Yeah. Great. Well, it was uh, great to talk to you today. Thank you for sharing your insights. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for taking the time.